Okay, so this is module 18, Aggregate Supply, and we will be talking about Mao's falafel and my favorite sandwich. So, aggregate supply is the relationship between the price level in a nation and the amount of output that firms are willing and able to produce. We actually have two supply curves. We have the short-run aggregate supply curve, which is sloped upward, just like our supply curve we talked about in microeconomics. And we have the long-run aggregate supply curve, which is vertical. And we'll talk more about both of these and the reasons why as we go through this and in the next few days. So just like all the curves that we've talked about, aggregate demand, supply and demand, the short-run aggregate supply curve can shift left or right. For right now, let's just worry about the short-run curve. Um, any increase in aggregate supply means that producers are willing to produce more aggregate output at any price level. So as price level in the economy goes up, producers are willing to produce more goods, and that will mean a rightward shift in short-run aggregate supply. And on the other hand, um, a leftward shift means that the price level in the economy is falling and businesses are no longer willing to produce at the same level of output. And so the curve will shift left, as you see in the panel on the left. Now, there are four factors that shift the aggregate supply curve. Okay, And you will see where this is going, hopefully. The first one is productivity. As workers become more productive, they're able to supply more. What will cause workers to become more productive? Better education. Uh, they could be happier workers, uh, learning new skills, things like that. So productivity will shift the aggregate supply curve, increase to the right. Decreases in productivity will shift the curve to the left. The next are input costs. If we're talking about a falafel shop, price of soybeans goes up. That's going to decrease aggregate supply. The number one input cost, all of you should know this by now, nominal wage. If wages go up, nominal wages go up, aggregate supply is going to decrease. And if nominal wages go down, which rarely happens, but if that's the case, aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. Next factor is technology. Increases in technology will shift aggregate supply to the right. Very rarely do we have technology move in the opposite direction, but if a machine breaks down or things like that, um, you will have a leftward shift. But for the most part, technology is going to cause an increase in aggregate supply, improved technology. And then finally, actions of the government. And so you can see our little mnemonic here, P-I-T-A, PETA. This is how you can remember the factors that shift the short-run aggregate supply curve. What do we mean by actions of the government? This is when the government either imposes a tax on businesses or they offer businesses subsidies. So if the government wanted to encourage more falafel production, they would give falafel shops a subsidy. When the government gives a subsidy, that lowers costs and aggregate supply will increase. And on the flip side, if governments decide to tax businesses, that's going to increase costs and aggregate supply will decrease. Okay, so important that you remember the factors that shift the curve, P-I-T-A, PETA. So changes in aggregate supply, let's take a look at this. We have our upward sloping aggregate supply curve, right? A shift, word, a shift to the right will increase aggregate supply. And there you see it moving. And conversely, we have a leftward shift showing, uh, shown there. And eventually, as I'm sure you can imagine, we're going to put aggregate supply and aggregate demand together. And now let's talk briefly about long-run aggregate supply. Okay, The reason short-run aggregate supply is slopes upward is because of this idea of sticky nominal wages. 
In the short run, nominal wages are sticky, meaning that they do not adjust very quickly. And so generally workers get paid the same amount for a long period of time. When they get hired, they enter into a contract, and so they, you don't renegotiate wages very often. And so what happens is if output increases by 5% um, and nominal wages stay the same, that's going to encourage firms to produce more. But if nominal wages had time to adjust, and so prices increased by 5%, and nominal wages also increased by 5%, what's happening to the profits of businesses? That remains the same. And so there is no incentive to increase output. The only thing that would happen in this case is an increase in the price level. Okay, And it's for this reason... In the long run, when nominal wages are adjustable, uh, we have a vertical long-run aggregate supply curve. And I can show you this more in class if you want to see how it works. It's a little bit easier to visualize. But this is the idea. Uh, the fact that nominal wages are sticky is the reason for the upward sloping curve. And when nominal wages have time to adjust, the curve becomes uh, completely vertical. Okay? And then um, long-run aggregate supply touches the horizontal axis at the economy's potential or what we've talked about as the natural rate of unemployment. This is where the economy wants to be, okay? Um, and so the economy will always sort of gravitate back to this long-run output level, okay? And when we talk about the long run, we're talking about a period of time when all factors are flexible. So prices can adjust, nominal wages can adjust. In the short run, generally, most things remain stuck, and the only thing that changes are prices. And so, again, economy wants to be in this long-run equilibrium. If the short-run aggregate demand curve and supply curve are not meeting at the long run, the economy is going to work to get back to its potential. Okay? Um, as I said, the long-run aggregate supply curve is analogous to the production possibilities curve. And so over time, you know, since we've started here with the economy, the potential for the economy has slowly been shifting to the right. Our potential has been increasing. Okay? Uh, reasons, better technology, right? We're able to do things better and faster. Our workforce is becoming more educated and so on, right? So our potential changes, but the idea is the same, is that we always want to be working at our potential. All right, so let's take a look at long run to short run. Here you can see with the dotted line, we have an aggregate demand curve and we have aggregate demand and aggregate supply meeting to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve. So this economy is working below its potential. And this is what's called a recessionary gap. And so without any government intervention, businesses will lower wages, lower input costs, that will increase aggregate supply, and aggregate supply will shift to the right, and now the economy is in its equilibrium. And then we have an economy experiencing inflation. You can see demand and supply are meeting to the right of the long-run aggregate supply curve. This is known as an inflationary gap. And uh, without any government intervention, short-run aggregate supply will shift to the left, bringing us back in line with um, the long-run aggregate supply. And again, we'll continue to talk about the, this. This, These are the basics. And... Uh, I'm happy to draw this up in class and show you um, in more detail what we're talking about. So bring questions to me tomorrow, and um, that's it.